What is up, y'all? Hope you're doing well today. This video is going to focus on the Canon C70 and a cage option for this camera that I think is a really good solution of the number of options that are out there. Now, as most of you know, I've upgraded to this camera recently, and if you're using this camera, you're probably going to find one of the main challenges is doing any sort of rigging. It only gives you a mount on the top here, as well as on the bottom, and then one point on the side, so attaching extra accessories to this can be a little bit tricky. Now, the easiest solution for that is to get a cage, something just like this. The cage we're gonna be taking a look at today is from Nitsi. They sent this over to me for free, but they haven't paid me to say anything about this product, so everything I'm talking about in this video are my own thoughts and opinions. Now, this cage does a lot of the things that I want a cage to be able to do for me with a couple shortcomings that we'll talk about. Now, first off, the, the thing I really like about the cage design is that it's super tight fitting to the camera. So we've got no extra space in here or over here. It's all fitting really snugly onto the, the body of the camera. And on the bottom, you'll see it's mounted with two screw points, which is really nice because as some people have noticed on the bottom of the C70, the mounting options are a bit funny. Um, this kind of eliminates that by giving you all sorts of quarter 20 um, as well as 3-8 threads on the bottom uh, to mount your tripod plate or whatever you want to do. And this also prevents any sort of swivel happening with the cage itself because we've got the two mounting points, so it feels fairly solid. They include this little magnetic screw thing here too to be able to adjust these things, which is a cool addition. We'll see how long that hangs on there when I'm out in the woods, but it is a pretty strong magnet, so nice feature there. And they've left room for ventilation as well, which I appreciate. Beyond that, the things that you'll see on the cage is at the top, we've got a bunch of different quarter 20 options as well as an RE locating mount here. We've got a bunch of options here with locking pin mounts as well. You can hook the original strap on this. They have a little slot for the strap in here. I don't actually use the strap. I find it gets in the way most of the time when I'm trying to mount it on a gimbal or something like that. If I could figure out a quick release solution for that, I would probably use it more often because it is comfortable on the hand. On the top here, you're, you're gonna see that it's not actually connected into the top mounting point on the camera, which I would have liked to see it would have made it a little bit stronger feeling. There'd be less play in the top, but it is nice for folks that want to use that stock handle from Canon that you're still able to access that. Now on the side here, we get a NATO rail that, that works really well with some additional mounting options. And I like how the cage kind of wraps around the front of the camera here. It feels like it's protecting some of this stuff if it were to drop on the ground. Now here you'll notice there is a little location for a HDMI clamp, and that's what this little piece is here. Now this is a prototype of their HDMI clamp. Um, I'm under the impression that they're gonna be updating this because it doesn't really work uh, in a lot of circumstances. So this would just thread onto here and then you can clamp your HDMI cable with this. The current downside of this is you cannot use it with a 90 degree HDMI cable, um, which I kind of prefer. It keeps my cabling a little bit tidier, but the, the piece sticks too far away from the camera for that 90 degree angle to work. So you're stuck with using straight HDMI cables and it doesn't really hold the cable that securely. So I'm hoping that the new design they come up with is gonna be a little bit better at making sure that um, it does the job that it's intended to do. Um, other things that I can tell you about this cage that I, I think could use a small amount of improvement is the cold shoe that is put into the cage here. It is extremely narrow. Now it does work, it does hold on to the stock Canon uh, mic holder, but it doesn't feel as secure as I'd like it to be. And I'm not sure why they couldn't have made that a little bit wider and you'd you know maybe lose a little bit of access to the switch or maybe a little bit of access here, but um, not the best design in my opinion. Overall still is getting the job done for me. So it's a little bit of a trade up there. Otherwise though, it's a pretty simple cage. They, they offer um, this extra piece here. This is a bracket for if you're using the speed booster from Canon, can go right in here and then that will actually rest right on the adapter. I'm using the non-speed boosted adapter so this doesn't do any good for me, but that comes in the case, which is really nice. So I think I'm gonna be running with this cage for a while now because it, it does do most of what I need. Um, with the exception of that HDMI clamp needing to get revised. And what I was wondering when I first got a cage was, am I going to be able to still use this on my gimbal? And is it gonna cause problems with getting balancing right? And I can say if you're using the Ronin S, you're going to have trouble with any cage that you use. This extra width that you get added on the side does not allow you to push the camera over 
far enough to be able to balance it properly without using a couple of counterweights. And you know, the counterweights aren't the end of the world. They are a little bit annoying to have to use. I ended up upgrading to the Ronin S2 and I'm super happy with that gimbal. And I can say that the cage will successfully balance on that, no problem. You've got plenty of room to work with, which I really like. And so, you know, if you're using this a camera body like this, that's a little bit larger, kind of a strange form factor to a degree, moving up to a larger gimbal probably makes some sense. And uh, you can successfully balance that with this cage on the camera. Um, now the other piece that they sent over just for me to take a look at is their Stingray handle. And when I first saw this online, I thought it looked like kind of a cool design. When it came in the mail, I realized how huge this, this particular handle is. Um, I'll show it to you on the rig just so you can see, but I find it's a little bit large for, for my purposes. It does have a really nice feel in the hand. It, it feels really solid. You've got a couple of different ways that you can hold it, which ends up helping you balance the rig a little bit. And it's got a really nice uh, NATO locking uh, attachment point. So all really nice features, just a little bit beefy for my, my uses, but I'll, I'll build the rig up now and you can take a look at what the full thing looks like and kind of make the decision for yourself on what's gonna work for you. There you go, that is the completed rig for my kind of normal run and gun setup. I've got the Atomus Shinobi here on the front. I actually have it in an itsy cage as well. Um, I really wanted a good option for the HDMI locking on my Shinobi because it is particularly loose, I find. Um, and the, the one from Nitsi is a really great um, cage to, to manage that. I hooked the cage on with this little kind of flexi EVF mount. Needs a little bit of oil, super squeaky. Um, and that goes onto a NATO rail that I have attached onto the Stingray handle. And I, like I say, you can kind of see how big this handle is in relationship to the camera. They do make one, I believe they call the Lil Stingray. So it's a miniature version of this. It looks like it's maybe about this long, something like that instead of this. So a little bit more manageable, probably a little bit lower profile as well. Um, so that's something that's worth considering. And then as you can see, this guy does mount on here. There's a little bit of play because I can't get it as tight as I would like, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna fall off the cage itself. So it, it seems like it'll, it'll get the job done. I do have on here, it might be hard to see, but I do have a NATO rail that I have mounted on top of the cage to allow me to connect my NATO handle onto there. Uh, it doesn't have any sort of NATO on the top, but it gives you, you know, as long as you get a long enough one, I believe this is a 70 millimeter, you can span the gap over the top of the, the cage itself and get that rigging. So I like this setup, it allows me to hold the camera really close to my body and everything feels super portable. I can bring this up, I can have it up at eye level if I need to, or if I'm doing lower shots, I can even be bringing it down super low like that. So overall, Nitsi Cage is getting the job done. I'm excited to see what that HDMI clamp looks like in the actual production release. I believe these will be coming out fairly soon. I'm not sure what the final price point is, but I believe it's somewhere between $100 and $200. Um, if I hear any dif anything different, I'll update that in the description down below. If you are looking for a cage, definitely check out the Nitsi and see if it gets the job done for you. Till the next video, get out there, make something beautiful, and I'll see y'all soon. Peace.